Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome to my knot channel. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the Bolin knot, tied three different ways with three unique applications. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is start out by showing you how to tie each knot inside at the work table so we can go over them quickly and efficiently with a nice clear view. And then we're gonna come back outside and we're gonna look at the applications of the knots. Okay, so you might already be familiar with these knots, but I recommend you watch this entire video just in case I do things a little different from what you're used to. Let's head on inside and take a look. There are many different types of loop knots. If you'd like to discover more, I recommend you check out my video, 12 Great Loop Knots. Link in the description and also at the end of this video. The first knot we're gonna have a look at in this video is the common Bolin knot, which is a knot used to form a fixed loop at the end of a rope. There are a few different ways to tie a Bolin knot. Most people will be familiar with the little story that describes a rabbit jumping out of its hole, running around a tree, and then heading back down its hole again. This story describes the path of the working end of your rope as you tie the bowline. Have a look. Begin by creating a loop by twisting your working line. This is the hole the rabbit jumps through in the story. From there, take your working end up through the loop and then around the standing part of your rope. This is the rabbit jumping up through the hole and running around the tree. Then pass your working end back down through the loop, or as the story goes, the rabbit jumps back down its hole. From there, you just cinch the knot up tight. As you can see, the common bowline creates a fixed loop at the end of a rope. Now let's have a look at how to tie the running bowline. So the running bowline is very similar to the common bowline, except that this time we're gonna create an adjustable loop or a noose at the end of a rope. To tie a running bowlin, we're gonna to need to first create a bite in a rope so that we have a standing part and a working part. Begin tying your running bowlin by twisting your working line to create a loop. From there, take your working end and first pass it behind and around the standing line and then up through the loop and around the standing part of your rope, followed by passing your working end back down through the loop and then cinch the knot up tight. As you can see, the running bowline creates an adjustable loop or a noose. The final knot we're gonna look at before heading back outside and looking at the applications of these knots is the bowline on a bite. The bowline on a bite is a knot that provides a fixed loop midline on your rope. To tie a bowline on a bite, you're gonna start at a midway point along your working line. First create a bite in your line and then create a loop within the bite, similar to how you have with the previous two bowlines. From there, pass the end of your bite through the loop, then open up your bite and wrap it around your loop all the way out and back to the standing part. From there, cinch your knot up tight. Okay, let's head back outside and see these knots in action. Okay, so there's a lot of different applications that you can use a loop knot for, and each of these is a type of loop knot. So I'm gonna focus on just applying them in really the most simplest sense, just to give you an idea of how they can be used. So in this video, I'm gonna be using a braid utility rope just so that it's more noticeable of what I'm doing, but certainly paracord or other types of rope or cordage could be used with these knots. So to start off, we're going to look at the Bolin knot. And the Bolin knot is one that's used in life-saving and search and rescue, but it's also a popular camping knot. And really, it's probably one of the most important or most commonly taught knots. Uh, it's got so many applications because it creates a fixed loop at the end of a rope. So uh, for example, as a rescue rope, you know, we can easily tie the, you know, wrap it around a person, create our loop up around the standing part and back down. And we have a tow rope or a, a loop to help assist somebody. Uh, the loop is not gonna cinch up tight around them. It's fixed in place, okay? But I'm also gonna show how to use the bowline in application with a ridge line. 
So a ridge line is a line that runs between two anchor points and typically is used to set up a shelter or a clothesline. And although the common bowline wouldn't be my preference of doing this, uh, it's still definitely doable. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my bowline knot in the end of my rope. This time I'm gonna tie a smaller bowline simply because I'm going to be using this smaller tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it around the tree and then what's common is often people will take their uh, standing line and pass it through the loop and then feed their line through the bowlin. And it's not ideal because if you're working with, you know, 25, 50 or 100 feet of rope, you know, it's going to take a while to you know run it through and take a while to untie it at the end so one option is to run just a bite through the bowline and then you can use a tent stake or even a tree branch or something like that and just hook it through the bite and create a hitch here that's very similar to a, a marlin spike hitch except using a, a bowl and knot. Another option and if I was to use any of these options this would be my preference it would be to just use a, a carabiner at the end. Now I can clip onto that bite and do the same thing Right, and I would prefer this because the carabiner is not going to slip off of the bite. Although, with this method, even easier and sort of pointless of tying onto that uh, bite would just be to clip on to the end of the bowline and then clip onto my running line. So my preferred way would be to use a running bowline, which creates an adjustable loop or a noose. So with the running bowline, all I would need to do is pass my rope around the anchor point, create my loop, pass my working end behind the standing, pass my tail end up through, around, and back down, and cinch it up, and now, I have my bowline knot with my working end fed through the loop and I haven't had to pass all the standing line down through the loop once it's tied. And from here, I can just snug up my loop and basically I've created a hitch using a running bowline. So the next knot is a bowline on a bite and a bowline on a bite creates a loop midway on a working rope. So in this demonstration, I have the line running horizontally, but it could definitely be a vertical line uh, used for rock climbing or even just to hang things in a vertical fashion. So in this application, I already have the rope anchored. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a loop in midway of the line. And what I'm gonna do is first create a bite, and then I'm gonna tie my bowline on a bite by tying the loop and passing my bite through the loop, opening it up, feeding it around, and pulling it tight. Okay, so now that we have our loop tied midway along our line, again, I can easily attach a carabiner in there or tie off anything midline. Okay, so there you have it. The bowline, the running bowline, and the bowline on a bike. Now, as promised, here's a link to my video, 12 Great Loop Knots. Now, I highly recommend you check this video out. If you like this video, then please give it the thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, okay? Thanks for watching.